An article came out hinting at the possibility of the Toronto Blue Jays being sellers at the deadline yet again. And we know that this month of June is going to be a really tough one of baseball for the Toronto Blue Jays. And if they don't turn it around by the trade deadline, they might be selling off assets that we may have not thought coming into the season. So we'll break that down in much more in this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host Nick Goss. Excuse the hair. I'm going to be getting a haircut soon. Excuse the beard also. It's not not too pretty to look at. So look at the look at the Nick side of your screen for this video. Do us all a favor and do that. Do yourselves a favor and do that. But Nick, some uh, reports are coming out here that the Jays might be sellers at the deadline. Yet again, we've been hearing these reports circulating over and over and over again. We don't have a definitive answer. Ross Atkins came out and refuted those claims. But of course he's going to do that. He's never going to show his hand. He, uh, At least a, a GM will never show their hand and, and give their strategy away because then you can get taken advantage of when teams really want to make deals. So I don't know if Ross Atkins is being truthful in the sense that he doesn't want to trade anybody or that he's not listening on any of the prized assets on the Blue Jays, but a lot of reports are coming out. Some people that are very tapped in with Major League Baseball, Nick, that are saying it's a legitimate possibility that the Blue Jays could be headed in that direction. Now, they, they lost two out of three against Milwaukee. They're coming up against Cleveland today in a three-game set, which does which is not easy. I mean, Cleveland is a first-place team, gave the Blue Jays fits all of last season. This month could go a long way in terms of determining the approach at the deadline for the Jays. And if they don't turn it around, if they don't get over that 500 mark and get themselves into playoff contention firmly by that date, then it could be curtains for a lot of the Blue Jays players. Yeah, the Jays are front and center in every single trade room you're seeing. That's because no one really knows how these next couple of weeks are going to go. But yeah, before we get into it, quick reminder to hit the subscribe button. But let's dive into what you said. Now, this is John Morosi. There's also another reporter because I know a lot of fans out there are... uh... You know, don't trust John Morosi, but MLB Insider makes prediction on the Blue Jays' plans at the trade deadline. John Morosi went on MLB Network and uh, summarized that the Blue Jays aren't ready to trade away Springer, Bichette, or Vladdy just yet. And he said, right now, I think the Blue Jays are still somewhere in the middle as to where they may go with this direction. I think right now, because of how leveraged the Jays are to win with this group this season and next year, they're probably going to still, I think, let this play out a bit longer. Now, Peter, they are three and a half games back of a wild card spot and he basically said, i don't think we're going to see a dramatic sell by the jays at this moment in time i think for now given what the payroll is they're going to let it play out and see if they can at least get into that third wild card spot but he also mentioned at the end that like you said if things go the other direction they could be one of the most watched teams in baseball i think they're going to be one of the most watched teams regarding the trade deadline in all of baseball regardless because if they choose to sell they have the assets and no other team is actively selling if they choose to you know remain pat what does this team do from there i don't know but it's going to be interesting yeah, well, I'd argue and say that the White Sox have very well, good assets, too, at the deadline. Uh, Garrett Crochet could be on the block, who is has an ERA under three in 82 innings this season, and he's uh, struck out 13 batters yesterday, only threw one off-speed pitch. That, that was nuts. And then you have Lewis Robert as well, who – you know, is, is one of the premier power hitters in the game. Now, what I think the White Sox should do is keep those guys and build around them, but – They seem to be eager to trade them and they're listening to trade packages. So I think teams might focus in on those two players and in tune, the Blue Jays players may be pushed down a peg because Robert can offer something that Vladdy and, uh, and Bo can't in the terms of power. And uh, Crochet is a premier arm with three years of control, maybe even four years of control. I I, got to check that out. But I I mean, those are two big time assets. But yeah, there's no kidding that Vladdy and Bo are definitely big time pieces to be watched at this year's trade deadline. Well, I think they're. I don't think they'll get traded because the Jays are still in this uh, competitive window. They they made those renovations. They're still trying to sell seats. They're trying to sell season tickets. They don't want to get rid of all the marketable players and and go in the other direction because that's not good for ticket sales. And that's the bottom line. You know, you want to be able to fill the stadium and generate revenue. That's the number one goal here. Uh, And then you want to win for most teams. That's usually how it goes. So I don't think either one of them is going to get traded this season. But I definitely think it's a real possibility. Like if you get an offer for Vladdy or Bo, Nick, that includes – top prospects, guys that you can build your franchise around for five to 10 years. 
I think they'll definitely listen and I think they'll do their due diligence on that part. But unless it's a surefire offer like that, I just can't see it happening. Yeah. Similar to the one Soto offer where they weren't planning on trading him, then an offer blew him away. It's, I mean, yeah. if a huge offer comes in, like John Morosi says, like they're in the middle right now. I mean, the team is in the middle. They're 33 and 35. They have a pretty brutal stretch of games, upcoming guardians. They play the Yankees. If they don't do well with those stretch of games, the answer might decide itself. And then you look at another article, like there's so many articles, Peter, of just multiple trades yeah. that could happen. It's because of how indecisive, not indecisive, how interesting this situation is. And we saw them trade Kevin Biggio. You see this here. The Jays have not signed either Guerrero or Brichette long-term. This is from Ken Rosenthal now. I'm not sure they want to sign either long-term. And at some point, if the season doesn't turn around, they're at least going to need to listen at the deadline. And we're probably going to have another video covering everything Ken said here. But the point is, is like, they don't have these guys signed long term. They don't have Danny Jansen signed long term. You have a bunch of pending free agents. Jimmy Garcia, Jordan Romano's upcoming after next year. Like, there's a lot of valuable assets that this team has that they could sell if they want to at least retool. But if they just stand pat, I don't think it's a World Series contender anyway. But I do get the point of no. they make the money from the three game wild card series playoff games. And that's really what they're focused on, as John Morosi. And like you said, I mean, it's just the way it is. Three and a half games back, if they go on a big run. They're not going to sell if they start to uh, the ground starts to fall underneath on the floor. I don't know. It could seem like the, maybe they do trade one of the two. They're not going to trade both. And I don't even know if they trade either of them, even if they fall out of contention. And that's pretty disheartening hearing that as a fan, right? That the goal is to generate those that extra revenue from the three games or, or whatever and guarantee yourself a longer season. Well, that 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 should be step one of your goal. That shouldn't be the ultimate goal. And I'm sure it's not like the, the internal conversations that they've had and everything, but I do understand what you're saying, Nick, that there are some valuable assets on this team, but at the same time, they're very young assets like Vladdy and Bo. So it's not like they're in their thirties and they're due for long-term extensions. They're 25, 26 years old and they're due for long-term extensions. So it's a little more it, it's a little more digestible if you're the Blue Jays front office to go ahead and sign one of those two guys or even both if you want to go in that direction. I don't think it's realistic for them to keep both because of the payroll, because of other guys making big time money. But I would lean more in the Vladdy direction now, and it makes total sense to keep him around. Uh, and right now, you won't get equal value for him because he has a year and a half left on his contract and. He hasn't been performing to the level that he set in 2021, but he's getting there step by step. I don't know if he'll ever put up those same power numbers. Power seems to be down way across the board, unless you're Aaron Judge around Major League Baseball. So I, I don't know if it's realistic for him to get back to that 48 home run mark, but he's still a very good hitter and someone that the Blue Jays lineup could be built around. So it would make sense to keep him, especially considering that he's 25 years old. And I wouldn't be in a hurry to deal him, but if you can get big time assets in return, like four or five assets that can maybe equal or, or surpass his value, then I'd listen. But if it's anything below that, I'm just not interested if I'm the Jays front office. Retool or not, I think Vladdy is a part of the future of this team. I don't I'm not so sold on Bo, but I think Vladdy, whether you decide to go in the direction of rebuilding your team and retooling your roster i think vladdy is a part of that either way yeah i mean i agree i think Bo is more likely than vladdy and who knows if either of them gets traded i think we'll know over the next couple weeks but it starts with tonight i mean how this series goes with the guardians is going to play a lot into the momentum going forward yeah. and what the record is looking like even momentum aside but that'll wrap it up let us on the console your thoughts are on a vladdy or Bo trade and make sure uh to click on your screen here if you want to check our video from yesterday see you tomorrow